Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Steel Series Apex Pro Mini, which as you can see is fairly understated until you throw on some Prism keycaps and an Artisan keycap from Dwarf Factory. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that and all the things of interest about this keyboard while I unbox it and show you the highlights. Now, this is the Apex lineup of keyboards crammed into a 60% form factor. So they've taken the already popular Apex lineup and crammed it into an even smaller keyboard. It's available in wired and wireless. And in this video, I'm going to be unboxing the wireless version and talking to you about the various highlights of it, what it's like to use and the things of interest. Now, this is an interesting keyboard. If you're not aware already, it comes with Omnipoint 2.0 switches. That means they have adjustable actuation. These are new and improved and faster responding than ever before. So they're not only 11 times faster response time and 10 times faster actuation than traditional mechanical switches, but they're also designed so that you can adjust the actuation between 0.2 millimeters and 3.8 millimeters on a per key basis. So key by key, you can adjust the actuation across the entire keyboard, which is pretty nuts. It's also improved from the previous switch designs. So it was actually shorter distance, so you can adjust it in various different setups. And at just 0.2 millimeters of actuation, Steel Series claims a 0.5 millisecond response time for the fastest keystrokes in the world. So some bold claims from a tiny, tiny keyboard. Inside the box, you obviously get the keyboard itself, a USB-C charging cable, a keycap puller, and wireless dongle. So you have the usual wireless setup with 2.4 gigahertz and also Bluetooth connectivity. And this is an interesting little tiny keyboard that looks fairly understated when you first get out of the box. As I showed at the beginning, it's not that in your face, it's quite understated, and that's going to be beneficial, I suppose, depending on your personal preference. The claim is 30 hours with wireless on battery, or 40 hours with Bluetooth. That's obviously going to vary depending on the RGB lighting you're using. And as I'll show later on, the RGB lighting isn't that striking with those keycaps, the standard keycaps, and that's worth bearing in mind. And as I'll show, that's because they are PBT double shot keycaps, which means they don't let through a lot of lighting. Now, also included in the box, you get the USB-C wireless dongle and an adapter. So if you don't have USB-C, there's no need to worry. You can plug in the USB-A cable and then use the adapter and the dongle to get that wireless connection. So you have the easy setup there plug and play and obviously you can use steel series engine software to customize the actuation and the lighting and i'll show more of that later on so stick with me to the end to see how you can adjust those things a closer look at the keyboard and you'll see that there are two layers of lettering so you can actually see what the secondary action is on the switches on each of the buttons on the underside you'll note that you have a flip up feet so you can adjust it in various different levels of height now when i first got this out of the box i was struck by the sort of design of it the chunky frame and the overall feel of it and i'll show you what i mean in a second but when you turn it on you can see that it flashes depending on which mode you've chosen. So I've gone for 2.4 gigahertz here and it's flashing white until you connect the dongle to your PC and then the RGB lighting kicks in. If you choose Bluetooth mode, it flashes blue instead to let you know that it's in pairing mode. But here you can see a taste of the RGB lighting. It's not that fancy, I don't think. Uh, it doesn't really shine through. But what you'll see is if you press the Steel Series key, you get to see the meta layer, which is a secondary action of buttons. And they are highlighted there with basically uh, extra colors so you can see that the different buttons do different things so some of the buttons have a secondary labeling on them those then have extra action so when you press that button you get access to the other things that you'd normally see on a keyboard including the function row so you'll notice for example that the function row is missing from the top you only have the number row but if you press the steel series button you can then access the function row you can see some rgb lighting bleed when the keycaps are surrounding obviously they're just raised a little bit and you can see some lighting there but i think with standard keycaps you're really missing out the prism really makes a difference and i'll show you what i mean at the end of the video but one of the things that i wanted to do quickly was to show you the difference between this and the corsair k65 rgb mini 
so this is a keyboard I looked at a while back and I enjoyed the RGB lighting on that one because it has a white back plate so you can really see the sort of striking RGB lighting had some of the best RGB I'm going to do a comparison video in the near future to show these two side by side and show the difference between them I think the SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini is certainly more interesting than the K65 because it has those adjustable switches and the Corsair one that uses cherry switches so it's not as fancy also the frame is a little bit chunkier but in terms of the RGB lighting it's actually a little bit nicer looking also from a sound point of view curiously I found that the switches sound quite similar so the Omnipoint adjustable switches although they are tweakable they do have a sort of cherry sound to them which is disappointing if you're really into fancy switches but for most gamers it'll be perfectly fine I'm going to leave a proper sound test at the end of the video so you can hear the key sounds as well. So stick with me if you're curious about that. So what you're seeing so far is an interesting keyboard, but quite an understated one. I feel like it's not terribly in your face and it's not as flashy externally as it actually is internally. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. And I think that's important to bear in mind because you don't really find out what's going on with it until you jump into the software or until you read about the specs and the features of it. Also, when you get your hands on it and start typing, it really just feels like a standard average gaming keyboard, 60%. Uh, now, I'm generally not a fan of 60% keyboards. I don't like losing the directional arrows, for example, the function row and other keys. Having to press an extra button to access those things is a faff. However, if you like a small form factor keyboard, that kind of sits out of the way and doesn't take up extra space that you could be using for your mouse, then you might well prefer this. So this is certainly one of the nicer options that I've seen out of the small compact keyboards that I've tested. I've seen a fair few different ones now. I'll link to some of those videos in the description, including the Razer Huntsman Mini, the Corsair K65 RGB Mini, and obviously this and some others. And this is probably one of the nicer ones, especially when you change out the keycaps and start playing around with the settings a bit more and also getting used to where the extra layer of buttons are. One of the other things that's interesting about these switches is they're not only customizable in terms of the actuation, but you can also program two levels of button press. So you can set two levels of actuation in here. So it will activate and do one action and then you can press it harder and it will do another action, which is really interesting. One use case for this is suggested that you could have for example, W set for walk, but then if you press it a bit harder, it'll then make your character run in a game. If you could think of other actions, or you could carry out two actions logically from the same key, then you have the ability to do that. A close look at the Apex Pro switches, and you'll see that classic Steel Series setup there. They are adjustable Omnipoint switches but they look like Cherry MX switches and so you'll notice that the underside of the keycaps for example has that classic setup there so you can actually switch them out relative ease with another keycap set if you prefer but they are PBT double shot so they should last over time the one downside to this I've always found with PBT double shot so it's not just against this keyboard is the lettering isn't quite letting the RGB through that well and some of it is basically looks a bit marred so the lettering isn't as good and the lighting doesn't show as well and it's a bit difficult to see and it just doesn't look that fancy from certain angles the keyboard looks really nice still don't get me wrong but I think you can make it look a lot nicer with these now you will notice there's a switch at the rear for the Bluetooth and wireless option and you also have that USB-C charging cable port there as well it doesn't have hours and hours of battery life though just 30 hours wireless isn't that much i've definitely seen keyboards with more but it does have five onboard memory set up so you can tweak quite a bit there now this is a artisan keycap that i purchased from dwarf factory i'd recommend checking them out if you're into sort of additional keycaps and you want something curious there are a number of different ones and some really cool ones i found this one basically has a bear sitting playing a guitar with some penguins sitting next to him. A bit random, but I thought it looked cool and I thought it would be a nice addition to a keyboard. I actually bought this quite some time ago. Now I'm finally applying it to a keyboard that probably deserves it. And check out the link in the description to see more of the work from Dwarf Factory because there are some really awesome keycaps to have a look at. Obviously these are expensive and personal preference. You might not like them, but I thought it was pretty neat. You can see 
various different highlights of it. It's also really well designed and an intricate artwork. It comes with some nifty little finger gloves so that you can keep the keycap clean while you're installing it. Now I'm replacing my escape key, but obviously I could have used some other key. I just thought it would be a nice addition here at this point on the keyboard. The next step is to upgrade the rest of the keycaps to match. Now I got hold of SteelSeries Prism caps, kindly sent over by SteelSeries, which are available in white, black or pink. And these are pudding keycaps, PBT as well, so they're double shot still, and they're universal. This is the UK layout, hence the strange enter key and the small shift that confuses Americans. But the end result is a much nicer looking keyboard in my opinion. I really like the white on black, and also because it's pudding it means it lets through a lot more RGB lighting. So you can see the RGB shining through the lower half, but also the lettering sticks out really nicely. It is worth noting though that now this makes my life more difficult because obviously the secondary layer of actions is not labelled on the pudding keycaps, so now you have no idea what button does what. Which kind of means you do need to go into the SteelSeries GG software and edit the buttons or work out which button does what. Although pressing the SteelSeries key does highlight the ones that do have a secondary layer of actions, you don't really know what they are as standard. So it can be a bit of a faff. However, as you can see, it looks a heck of a lot better. The RGB lighting is magnificent. Now, one of the things I'm not too sure about is actually the RGB effects on this one. There are a limited number of effects, and obviously you can see through the pudding keycaps that they look pretty magnificent. However, I do remember there being a bit more customization options in terms of layering effects on previous Steel Series keyboards that I've seen. It doesn't seem as plausible on this one, unless I'm missing something you don't seem to be able to create as nice RGB effects. So I was a bit disappointed with this and the overall flexibility of what you can do in the customization here. So it's a bit of a shame. However, I do like the lighting. You can see it looks magnificent with the pudding keycaps. Now I want to talk a bit about the typing experience. This is obviously a very expensive keyboard. And my experience is actually very comparable with Cherry MX Red Switches. So very similar in the sort of funkiness of it and not overly pleasant on the ears. Don't get me wrong, it's not horrific. The stabilization's pretty nice. There's not loads of rattle or anything, but it's certainly not the nicest sounding keyboard I've tried. I'd expect more from a keyboard of this price point. And so from a typing experience, I kind of am a bit underwhelmed, especially for this price, and it's certainly not going to top out my favorite keyboards. However, the flexibility of things like adjustable actuation, obviously also that dual actuation option and more make it interesting. So now I'm going to dive into the SteelSeries GG software and show you some of that. And here we are within SteelSeries GG software. Now you'll notice that we're on the first one, which is the most interesting thing in my opinion is the actuation. Now it, actuation is adjustable on a per key basis across the entirety of the keyboard. And you can see that the level of actuations go between 0.2 mil and 3.8. So you can adjust it in whatever level you find suitable. Now, if you don't know already, actuation is basically where the key activates, so where you press it. So 3.8, for example, means that you have to push the key a lot further down, right basically into the board, whereas 0.2 is a really light feather touch. If you have a really light key press, generally, and you don't mash your keys, then you'll find 0.2 is really effective and very fast. This is obviously where the lowest latency happens and the fastest action. It is, however, perhaps a little bit too low for some people. If you're heavy-handed like I am, you might find that your keys are activating accidentally. But it's pretty cool that you can change it throughout the entire keyboard. So just for a demonstration purpose, I'm going to open up Notepad now and just show you what the difference is. So we have the key, we have WASD currently set to 0.2. The entire keyboard set to 0.2 at the moment. So if I just gently press A, you'll see that even with basic light touch, without even fully depressing it, I'm basically just gently, gently tapping that key. Obviously you can still press it all the way down, it'll activate as well. But you really just need a very gentle touch. Barely even pressing it, making no sound at all. Now if I change it and we go all the way to 3.8 and save that. Obviously you could do it across the entire keyboard or you can do it on a per key basis. But now you'll see if I, I'm pressing the key, nothing's happening. If I push it all the way down, obviously it then activates. 
and there's said to be 37 levels of activation in here so obviously you can choose what sort of level you want to be at so you can see 3, 2.8, 2.6 for example, 1.9. Now for reference Cherry MX switches usually activate at around 2 so that's where you'd normally be sitting at and this keyboard defaults to 1.8 so even just out of the box it's sort of already faster than your just standard cherry keys but you could probably go for one or something if you wanted a fast one if you're gaming and that's your main aim obviously you want to have the fastest actuation possible so pretty neat and the fact that you can obviously do it across multiple keys or just individual ones so you might choose for example just to do WASD like that so you can press control and then just select the keys that you want in order to do it or you can select by dragging so you have a selection of what you can do and what how you do it and basically then you can adjust the entire thing or just individual keys which is pretty neat now you also have the dual bindings and dual actuation so this is where you can set two levels of actuation so we could set for example at 3.8 and that's our secondary layer of actuation. So now we have 1.4 as a standard and then 3.8 is the secondary. You can then go into your dual bindings so you can select a key that you want and you could have this so you can set it up with slightly different setups so you can actually choose what you want to do. We could, for example, have a macro set up on a key press or you could have keyboard buttons So now, for example, I've just made WASD Shift and W so that when I'm pressing W all the way down into its full actuation point, that means that I'm then running. So if you're in a game where Shift is your run mechanic, when you're pushing and holding the W key down, you're now running. But if you're gently pressing it, you're just doing the walk without holding Shift. So that's one option. Obviously, a lot of other potential options. You can see that you can add dual activation bindings basically the entire keyboard you just need to set the second layer of where it is obviously the logical thing to do is to have the highest point as your standard and then the lowest point as the second binding otherwise you're probably going to struggle to find where the second point is that would be pretty neat though now meta bindings is slightly different this is where you press that steel series key so as i was saying you press the steel series key in the bottom right and that activates the secondary layer so you can see that you have print screen on P, for example. We also have media playback buttons on B, N, M, the arrow keys and question mark and some other layers as standard. And that's where you get your secondary layer. What you'll notice is I actually have two here, J and K, because one of the biggest frustrations for me is not having arrow keys. So just directional arrows. They're actually over here on WASD. So you can see actually I do actually have them as standard. They're programmed over here. But I feel that's a bit of a pain. Usually I'm used to them being in this corner. I use a TKL keyboard, so usually I'm used to them being on the right-hand side of the keyboard. So I, want, I wanted easy access to have those. So you can just press the Steel Series key, and now I can press J and K, and that does left and right. I add directional arrows. Obviously you have a lot of choice in what you do with the other ones. You can customize whichever one you want, basically. If it doesn't have an action on it already, you can select through. But even if it does, you can change those as well. So the function rows up here for example but you can set like you've got page up and home and print and other things around this area you can change those too so lots of different possibilities and that's obviously on the secondary layer but you also have the primary layer which is just your standard key presses as well and as you saw you've got a macro editor and you can change plenty of other things too so there's loads of other things possible in there the other thing that i was mentioning is you also have the option to change the rgb lighting the rgb effects are really limited you don't seem to be able to select as much. You can do it per key basis. You can select the whole board, much like with other things, but you can see you can go through various different presets, Steel Series, Orange, Vapor Dreams, West Coast, Haze, Prism, and things like that. However, I just it, you don't seem to be able to layer it. It doesn't seem as intelligent as it used to be in Steel Series Engine. They seem to have changed it. It's not as easy unless I'm missing something. It's not as good. Overall, the keyboard is pretty fantastic i do like it uh, for a number of different reasons i do think the typing experience isn't as good as it could be and i've certainly seen nicer keyboards and i prefer low profile personally also the frustration of 60 percent can be a bit annoying but as you can see nice looking keyboard with loads of hidden features and certainly looks a lot better with the prism keycaps be sure to check out the links in the description to find out more let me know in the comments what you think 
Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.